drones are a really amazing technology and they can be used for all sorts of different purposes. So on the table here, we have an array of uh, different sorts of drones that we've built up for different sorts of purposes. And these are some of the smaller drones that we have. We've got some much, much bigger six rotor and eight rotor drones that are not in this particular lab. So this particular one, for instance, is kitted out for monitoring air quality. So as it flies, it can breathe air in through this tube um, and record what it is that it finds as it flies through the air. So looking for biological pathogens, also things like fugitive methane emissions we can do with drone technology. But it can also be used for all sorts of mapping applications. So we've done projects like studying dugongs in the bay using imagery from, from drones, hyperspectral imaging from drones, which lets us tell the health of reefs or vineyards, uh, spotting koalas in trees using thermal, thermal cameras. So many, many applications for drones. We also have a very big research activity in aerospace systems, uh, not just drones, but also larger fixed wing uh, unmanned aircraft. So we have a big project looking at automatic collision detection. So this is how can a drone using cameras mimic the sense that a human pilot has of being able to see uh, aircraft that it could potentially collide with. So we want to replicate in software on board the drone, the pilot's see and avoid capability. We also have a very major project looking at how we integrate drones into the civilian airspace. The moment the airspace control system that we've built is all for aircrafts flown by human beings. And sometime in the future, we think that's gonna be a mix of autonomous aircraft and ones flown by human beings. So what are the research problems in allowing unmanned aircraft to interact safely with fleets of piloted aircraft as we know them today. Another research topic that uh, we do a lot of work in here is looking at drone navigation. So how do we remove the dependence that drones have on GPS navigation? And that's really important if you want to fly drones in an environment where you can't get a decent GPS signal. So that might be uh, underground, it might be indoors, it might be inside forest under thick tree canopies. Another application that we looked at is using drones to monitor uh, electrical power poles and particularly wooden power poles. There's a bazillion of them in the country and they tend to rot. The wooden cross arms of these things rot and it's very hard to actually inspect that. So we developed a drone system that could autonomously uh, fly with respect to a pole up, take photographic survey across the top of the cross arm and then come back to, come back to the operator. Academics within the centre are active in undergraduate education. So we teach into electrical engineering, mechatronic and uh, avionics degrees here at QUT. And part of our outreach activity is a competition we've run since 2007 called the Outback Challenge. And the Outback Challenge, the, the, the most important person in that challenge is Outback Joe and the scenarios that he's lost. And the competitors need to create an autonomous aerial vehicle system that can search a large area of land to find Outback Joe and then to drop him a water bottle. And it took many, many years before students were able to successfully solve this competition. Uh, but it's been a great way of getting engagement at all levels from schools to university level teams and to show, I think, some important civilian applications of UAV systems, not just the military ones that we see too often on the TV.